Geekom's Mini Air 11 looks strikingly similar to an Intel NUC Mini PC from a couple years ago, and that's a good thing. Many of the great design features are included in this budget unit, which competes head to head with my top pick of 2022, Intel's NUC 11 Essential. And that ladies and gentlemen, works out perfectly, because when Geekom contacted me to provide a free sample, they specifically wanted a comparison against Intel's unit to see how they compare, and where improvements can be made. The Geekom Mini Air 11 comes with Intel's N5095, 8GB of RAM, and a 256GB NVMe SSD for $170. US But Geekom has provided an extra coupon which brings down the price to $160 for my viewers. For the money, you get a nice set of accessories in the box, including a protective carry bag, monitor mount, power supply, HDMI cable, and a mini display port to HDMI adapter. Like, when has an adapter ever been included? Never, that's when. The Mini Air 11 is made of high quality plastic, with a metal bottom lid and metal frame inside. Build quality wise, both the NUC and Mini Air 11 are solid units that don't give off a cheap vibe. I also prefer the look of the Mini Air. That protective rubber in front of the NUC reminds me of a pacifier. Anyway, most budget minis have very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Modest. Yeah, a modest set of ports. Even the NUC 11 Essential. But the Geekom Mini Air 11 has a more modern port selection, with USB-C 5 gigabit and USB-A 10 gigabit, along with a dual purpose audio jack on the front. I thought these four holes would mean a quarter a microphone, but no, it's not included. On the side is a full size SD card reader, like all NUX used to have. On the rear is a mini display port 1.4, gigabit LAN, dual USB 3 5 gigabit, USB C 10 gigabit, and HDMI, which is listed as 1.4 on the spec page, but I hooked up a 4K monitor and got 4K 60Hz no problem, which would make it HDMI 2.0 compliant. Like the Intel NUX, this one is powered with a barrel jack connector. It's great to see Geekom followed Intel's method of labeling USB ports with a 5 or a 10, so you clearly know the speed of each port. Unlike the idiotic USB 3 naming scheme. Opening up the unit is just like an Intel NUC, which means it's super easy. Well, sort of. The screws were in a bit too tight from the factory for my liking, but otherwise, all good. The bottom metal lid comes with a thermal pad for the SSD. Big thumbs up there. This is the only budget mini apart from the NUC 11 Essential that has cooling for the M.2. I'm not surprised to see a single 8GB 2666 DDR4 stick here. Before you start rolling your eyes, I need to make two points. One, I haven't seen any pre-build use dual 4GB sticks to get an 8GB dual channel configuration. And two, Let's actually look at the benchmarks to see what the drop in graphics performance is like before we make judgments, shall we? It's definitely less than you think. The NVMe SSD is an SX Micro, which I haven't heard of. Wi-Fi is soldered on and is an older Intel AC7265 chip. The NUC 11 Essential comes with the AC9462 as an M.2 card, which is newer and better. Both units have the CMOS battery underneath and removing the board on both isn't easy at all. On the Geekom website, you'll find the drivers, Windows 10 and 11 reinstallation downloads, plus the manual on an easy to navigate page. Why other smaller mini PC companies can't match this, I don't know. But I do have to point out that there are no BIOS updates that I can see, which is okay for those that never update anyway. And in the budget mini PC space, the only minis I've encountered that get full BIOS update support are the Intel NUX, MSI Cubies, ASUS PN Series, and Gigabyte Bricks Minis. The Geekom Mini Air 11 comes with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed, but I had no problem running Ubuntu off a USB, and same goes for Chrome OS Flex. Intel Celeron N5095 is no speed demon, but it's decent for everyday computing, video playback, and photo editing. And now it's time to look at some charts. The Intel NUC 11 Essential in the benchmarks features the faster and pricier Pentium CPU, but it's good for a comparison, and let's also see how the Geekom Mini Air 11 fares against the best N5095 in each benchmark. In single core Cinebench, the Mini Air 11 performs well 
and is reaching for the top of the Celerons. It's 13% behind the Pentium NUC. In multi-core, it beat all the Celeron units, even the B-Link U59 Pro, which was my second favorite budget pick of last year. It was 10% ahead of the next best N5095, and it's just 6% behind the Pentium NUC, which is the same amount of trails in the video encoding test. The Geekom Mini Air 11 has very strong CPU performance. Next, I tested the included SSD, and for a Gen 3 NVMe, it's not fast. But it still outperforms an M.2 SATA SSD, which most pre-builds at this price include. The 3D Mark result is an interesting one, as the two N5095 units in the benchmarks are dual channel. But dual channel doesn't help much when the EUs have been slashed by a third against the N5105. The Mini Air 11 is just 4% behind the fastest N5095 in DX11, but the Pentium NUC is a huge 54% ahead. In DX12, the Geekom is just 1% behind the fastest N5095 and trailing the Pentium NUC by 56%. Going by these graphics benchmarks, single channel memory is fine, but you still don't believe me, do you? You want me to test a dual channel kit on it? Okay, okay, I'll test with a 2666 memory kit. I'll do it just for you. And it'll be our little secret. Don't tell anyone else. 20 minutes later. Alrighty, so a dual RAM kit returned a 5% better score in DX11 and less than 1% in DX12. That's a little bit of graphics performance left on the table with a single channel memory. Almost all the options in the BIOS have been removed. If you need something specific, it's not accessible. Interestingly, the BIOS doesn't stretch to full screen either, instead going for pixel perfect representation. The BIOS is definitely something Geekom can improve on, as well as providing future updates on their website as needed. The idle power draw of 7 watts matched the other units in the roundup. Max power draw at 25 watts put it in the middle of this bunch, which is a good result when you consider its CPU performance. The biggest surprise comes from its cooling. It beat every unit in this lineup. The included NVMe drive doesn't have a temperature sensor, so I can't share that data. But it's going to be pretty good, considering it actually has some cooling. Another area the Geekom Mini Air 11 beat the competition was in fan noise. Those low numbers make it the quietest actively cooled budget mini PC I've tested. and combined with the performance and low CPU max temperature, it's clear this is an impressive budget mini PC. So, let's check out the pros and cons of the Geekom Mini Air 11. It has great build quality and is a nice looking unit. The set of ports are pretty good for a budget mini PC. Cooling is excellent, and there's even cooling for the NVMe drive. It performed really well, with low noise. However, it does come with only one stick of RAM, but for the N5095, that's a graphics performance loss of a few percent at best. Wi-Fi is an older chip and is soldered on. The BIOS options are locked, which for many is a non-issue, and you know what? It's pretty darn good. I could throw out another positive, like the amount of accessories you get, and nitpick about the lack of USB-C power delivery, but at $160 US dollars pre-built with a coupon code in my video description, it's a good choice. If you need a quality budget mini PC for the simple tasks, this one is definitely recommended. Design-wise, it's the closest performer to the Intel NUC 11 Essential, and reminds me of NUC 10 Frost Canyon. While it's difficult to compare the cooling and noise directly, as the Pentium is a higher-end CPU, which uses more power, the Geekom Mini Air 11 is definitely an impressive NUC clone, and that's really nice to see. Now compare this with the Blackview MP60 I reviewed earlier, and they are miles apart. Cheers!